we worked together on this contract, which was to Marco, um, to support ocean planning in the region. And um, it's been a about six month process. We have a living document now as a result, and I will describe a little bit more of that in detail, but it is certainly the embodiment of a living document in that um, it basically reflects the input of Peter and myself, Marco Management Board, and some of our other guiding um, entities along this process. And the RPB in the Mid-Atlantic will consider it for use in ocean planning, but it hasn't yet been endorsed or it doesn't any way reflect the views of the RPB. So I just want to be clear about that before I jump in. The process that we went through to develop the ROA, an overview of what it is, what it ended up being, um, and then Peter's gonna take over and do a live demo because we do have a draft website ready for your view and also for your perusal in the back there. We have a little kiosk set up in the back corner. Um, so at different times today, when you have a break, you can come by and interact with the draft website a bit on your own with us. So the purpose of an ROA, uh, the National Ocean Policy actually um, recommends the um, regional assessment process uh, as part of ocean planning, as part of developing these regional ocean plans. Um, it is to be a set of maps and information that describe the marine environment and human activities relevant to the subject matter of the plan. And therefore, the purpose of our ROA was to do just that, to provide information about ocean uses and resources, focusing on the two main goals in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Planning Framework, which includes healthy ocean ecosystems and sustainable ocean uses. And our goal as the project team that was selected for this work was to develop an innovative, dynamic, attractive, and easily updated web-based system to deliver this ROA. And I think it turned out to be all of those things. <laughs> so, um, our timeline and development process has been going on since about July. We were guided by a steering committee that was chaired by um, Sarah Cooksey and Kevin Chu and many others in the region. We started out um, doing our initial research this summer. Um, along the way, we've been coordinating fairly closely with our, um, the other contract teams that you'll hear from today, the Ecological Synthesis Project, the MDAT. Um, and the HUDS team for the Human Use Synthesis Project. In September, we had the opportunity to join you all for an RPB-sponsored um, workshop, or perhaps it was Marco. Um, either way, we went to a workshop in September with many of you folks and stakeholders um, to get some feedback and hear what everyone wanted to be part of the ROA, what the content should be like, and get some um, initial thoughts and input on draft outline and draft content that we had developed. And that was a great opportunity. We learned a lot about what the ROA, um, really what the folks in the region wanted the ROA to be and what, it, what they wanted it to contain. And we were able to take a lot of that feedback um, back to our desks and really change um, the framework for the ROA and make it responsive to all of you. So it's really been in the last couple months this fall that we've um, accelerated our, our work effort and developed the content of the ROA, had several rounds of revision with the Marco Management Board and our steering committee and, and several other folks to really dial in some of the content and get it responsive um, to the needs of the region. And um, lastly, design and implementation of this web-based framework. Peter has been working um, up until last night, I would think, actually, and maybe even a little bit this morning on making sure that things work well and, and look really, really nice. So an overview of what the ROA product um, is. We created it to be a standalone website and we got agreement from um, multiple folks in the region guiding us that it should be its own website that is off of, um, linked off of the Marco website. But we have links within the ROA to the Mid-Atlantic Regional planning bodies website to the Marco data portal um, and to Marco. So there's a lot of integration of pieces and, and back and forth between these, these different elements. As I mentioned earlier, the content is aligned to the draft regional uh, planning actions. So you'll see sort of a um, dichotomy in the website where we look at ecosystems and we look at human uses. It reflects the needs and input of multiple constituent groups, as I mentioned, a lot of um, feedback and input from that workshop in September, and a lot of feedback along the way from the RPB and Marco Management Board and our steering committee members. 
we tried really hard to balance this um, difficult task of sim synthesizing information and presenting it in an easily digestible way without oversimplifying some really tough issues. So we hope we were um, successful in that. We did have a lot of um, initial help from work by all of you and um, folks in the region in the past developing a regional ocean assessment white paper, um, the great work done by the Marco Data Portal team and gathering data sets and developing data. Um, and in general, many of the scientists, um, social and environmental scientists in the region who have put together um, scores and scores of data and developed figures and maps and graphs and things that display a lot of the information that you'll see in the ROA. As I mentioned, it also incorporates um, acknowledgement of the ecological synthesis project, the MDAT work, and the HUD's human use data synthesis project. And it was important that we incorporate even just the initial findings of both of these projects or a, a quick description of, of what they're about so that this document could remain relevant as ocean planning in the region continues in the near future. And lastly, we put a lot of effort into fully documenting all the scientific sources that we tapped for the ROA. So we spent some time developing a framework that allows users of the website to obtain some of the scientific sources themselves and to easily find them if we can't host them on the website or if they are a website. Um, you can easily get to those links and find those documents that are, are referenced throughout the ROA. This is a screenshot actually of the ROA. It's the very bottom of the page. It's a navigational tool throughout the ROA website. And it basically shows the outline um, that we worked really um, intensively with everyone to develop. And we spent a lot of extra time organizing this outline because we felt that it would really provide a structure and framework for the website and for the ROA content as we move forward. So it was very important to us as a team to get this these elements right and reflective of all the different components of the ROA that folks in the region wanted to see. So it's three main parts. There's an introduction which basically sets up why are we doing this? What is ocean planning? What is the Mid-Atlantic Regional Planning Body? What is MARCO? Um, what is an ROA? And then the second section is all about ocean, the ocean ecosystem and resources, and it's broken up into a couple parts. Um, characterizing the ecosystem, and then talking about status and trends. And that's sort of mirrored in the third section about ocean uses. We'd have a short section characterizing them, and then another discussion of status and trends. Within these, there's many subsections um, that we'll get into a little bit of detail when we do the live demo. Finally, we did a very short look at cumulative impacts. That was um, a request um, for the ROA to contain um, some indication or some discussion and references about um, how you might go about doing a cumulative impact um, assessment or why you might want to given all of the um, numerous human uses and numerous ecosystem components to consider in the ocean planning process. So what we have is that the ROA is a source of status and trends that may provide important context for the regional ocean planning process. We really hope that as folks continue to do regional ocean planning in the mid-Atlantic, they can go to the ROA as a resource to use it as a shortcut to get to more detailed information or provide just a higher level of, um, a high level 30,000 foot view of some of the information. It's a library of scientific literature, reports, websites and programs that relate to the Mid-Atlantic Ocean ecosystem uses and economy. So even if you find that the website itself is boring or not useful, you have a library. <laughs> I highly doubt that will be the case, but um, the library part is very important um, so that people can go back to those original sources and learn more about some of the topics that we're really only able to give a cursory view because of the nature of a website. And lastly, it is an interactive website that we think is suitable for both professionals and the public. Um, it's as graphically rich and engaging as we could make it. We worked really hard to find a lot of um, really nice imagery and figures and data-rich um, maps and graphics. It is reader-friendly and user-friendly, so it, it doesn't use a lot of complex terminology, and we try to really explain and define any complex terms or, or subjects um, that, that we had to present or that we felt we needed to present. And from a more practical standpoint, it's responsive to device. So whether you're looking at it on a, a desktop or a laptop computer um, or your mobile device or tablet, it will reformat um, the content to fit those devices. And so you can scroll um, 
on your way home today on the plane or sitting in the airport um, on your phone. It is also, this is a little bit of a back-end inf information, it's an easily updated web-based system. So the Marco staff is trained actually in using this um, content management system for websites. So it is truly a living document um, if you so desire to go in, um, the folks that have a username and password at Marco can go in and make additions, um, add new figures, add more information as things develop with the regional ocean planning process or as the science, um, both social and environmental advances that can stay up to date. And so after all of that ex explanation and talking, now we'll do the live demo, which is the really exciting part. Thank you, Emily. Um, so I'm going to do a, uh, a little bit of a, of a guided tour of the website. Um, Emily is going to be driving over there on the computer. Um, I won't get into a lot of detail into the content, I'll try and give a, an overview of the content, some of the features of the website, um, get into enough detail so that for the purpose of, purposes of discussion today, um, and you can see what, what's there and delve into it in more detail uh, yourselves uh, once it is online, which will happen this weekend. Um, so as Emily described, we put a lot of thought into the, the organization and the content of the website, uh, really trying to hit the sweet spot of uh, what's the right information um, and the best way to present it. Um, the, the top uh, navigation reflects uh, the three sections that Emily described. And again, the content aligns with the, uh, the content that's going into the action, ocean action plan for the region. Um, and if you scroll down, Emily, uh, so this, the introduction page uh, provides an overview of what, this, what the ROA ROA is and the purpose of it. Um, that the overview there gives you a sense of what you're going to find once you uh, go in deeper into the the uh, website. There's an overview of uh, ocean planning, and again, kind of a high level. What are we looking at for changes in the the Mid Atlantic region over the next say 20 years or so? Uh, and then there's a, a description of the ocean planning process, which there's and there are links to if you want more information about that. There are links over to the RPB website and to the Marco website. Uh, where you can really get into the details. Um, and uh, also, it, the, the information that's in the uh, data portal is, there's a lot of, uh, that's intertwined uh, very closely into the, the ROA web website. Uh, and there's a uh, description of that here. So again, background on the uh, ocean plan planning process. And then down at the bottom, the, the screenshot that Emily showed you before, that, that is a, a clickable menu, it's at the bottom of every page. Uh, so it kind of keeps you oriented uh, and makes it easy to jump around uh, to exactly what you're interested in. Um, and why don't we go to uh, the, uh, the Ocean Ecosystem and Resources top. There you go. Um, so here you see, again, this is the landing page for this main goal that's organizing the content of the website. Uh, and there are uh, links down to the, the sub-pages. Again, the characterizing the ocean ecosystem pages are intended to provide a high-level um, context type of information about um, the, the ecosystem that are, is useful as background for the regional planning process. Uh, the status trends and linkages uh, pages are intended to be more focused on the aspects of this that relate to the, the actions that will be in the action plan. So again, trying to inform the specific work of the regional planning process. Um, let's go to the oceanographic setting processes. Uh, this is a good example of, it's, it's high level information about uh, where are we in the, the ocean basically and, and what's the, the oceanographic setting for what, what happens in the mid-Atlantic region. And these, these figures are drawn from other sources and they're links to those sources so that you can delve further into the, uh, the information. And uh, one thing I want to point out too, down at the bottom, the very bottom of the, uh, the page there, there's the, uh, the work cited link there. Uh, Emily mentioned that we've documented the scientific sources for these. Uh, this takes you, all the sources are, will, are listed in the uh, Works Cited page, um, and for documents that are PDFs that are staying static, 
uh, we're actually downloading those and hosting those on the ROA website, uh, so it'll be a, a permanent repository of those rather than uh, relying on the, the links that currently exist because those change over time, of course, and so we're trying to reduce the number of, of dead links that happen over time. So this, this page gives you a brief, gives you the abstract and then you can download the reference right from there. And the references are also embedded in the course of the, uh, in the text uh, throughout the, the ROA as well. So why don't we go to the, uh, the important biological, chemical, and physical attributes. There you go. <laughs> uh, this page uh, really uh, highlights, uh, especially as you scroll down a little more, to the links over to the, uh, the data portal. Um, these maps on the right are screenshots of data portal maps. And there are links uh, over to the live uh, map, so you can go over and use the interactive version of these. Uh, and then there's uh, text that describes uh, in a very concise way what, what's important about uh, these habitats and uh, uh, components of the, the uh, ecosystem. And the, uh, we used screenshots here rather than embedding interactive maps, again, partly for the, just to keep the longevity, longevity of the site uh, intact so that um, as things change on the, the data portal, as they are continually evolving, um, the, there'll always be a link over to it, but we were able to capture the, uh, the state of it right now and uh, that'll be maintained. Go down to the bottom and go over to the uh, the living marine resources. Uh, this page, uh, Emily mentioned that we were coordinating with the marine life uh, data analysis team and the human uses uh, synthesis team uh, as we we're developing. This those projects were happening the same time as the ROA. So uh, one of the challenges has been how to integrate the information from those projects into this. Um, and so this page on marine life. Uh, Again, it's a very high level information about marine life in the region with links to uh, more information. Um, and over time, I believe the plan is that uh, you can see the marine life uh, data analysis project right there. Uh, that information will be integrated. This will be a, a home for that information as it, as it is finalized and ready to be released onto the web. And there's a similar uh, link uh, to the, the human uses page too. Um, Let's go down and go down to the uh, human uh, settlements page. We also uh, tried to make use of, if you mouse over the little points on the graph there, so some just neat interactive uh, ways of presenting the data to you so that um, you can, uh, this is drawn from uh, the census data um, prevent, presented very cleanly and simply here, but with links to delve more into it if you want. And then there's also some uh, more specific information that relates really to the human aspects of, one, one human aspect of uh, ocean planning, uh, beach nourishment, uh, which is a coastal issue and also not more offshore issue um, as uh, sand is, is brought from offshore shore areas to uh, replenish the beaches with sand. So some background information about that, and again, links to, to learn more about it. All right, the ecosystem services page. Uh, there's one thing that was a goal from the outset was to try and make this uh, not just a, a repository for information on different uh, aspects of the ecosystem and ocean uses, but actually trying to link those together into, uh, to support an ecosystem-based management uh, approach. Uh, so again, this is a high-level uh, discussion of uh, ecosystem services, which are the benefits that people receive from the ocean ecosystem, and there are uh, various categories of those, uh, and uh, there are people looking at how to develop the actual value of those. A lot of those are not captured in dollar values. In, in They're not bought and sold. So uh, people working on how to really consider those as part of the ocean planning process in a meaningful way. Uh, we can go quickly through to the, uh, the climate change one. 
uh, again, a lot of these I just want to show them to you so you know what's there uh, and you can read more um, on your own afterwards. Um, this highlights uh, aspects of climate change as it relates to this region uh, and uh, pulls out uh, some of the key uh, changes that are occurring and that are expected to incur, uh, such as changes in sea level. And ocean acidification is another important process happening in this region. There's, this page has uh, an additional box. Some of the, some of the pages, uh, as you get further into the, deeper into the website, have uh, these drop-down boxes that open up and provide you links to further sources of information. Uh, so that you don't necessarily have to go to the Works Cited page or find the links within the, uh, the text. You can uh, kind of explore it through these different resources as well. Uh, let's see. The, why don't we look uh, briefly at, uh, well, I'll just mention the ecologically rich areas in the migration corridors pages. Um, those, again, are areas that are very actively being worked on by the RPB and by Marco to define what exactly those are and where are they. Um, so at this point, again, this is a living document. This is a uh, uh, high-level discussion of that uh, topic and the need to know more about ecologically rich areas and then as that information is developed further, uh, it'll be a landing place for that. Um, and the same is true for the, the migration corridors and region-wide uh, features page. Uh, it is, uh, gives you the, the high-level description and uh, cool video showing you some migration and action. <laughs> um, and then as that information is further developed, uh, it, this will be a, a home for that information to be on the, on the web and easily accessible. Um, oh, can, you, can you back up to the, the so the, the linkages uh, area there, just below the figure, yeah. Um, the, the pages that are focused on the status and trends uh, and relate more closely to the, uh, the actions that will be in the action plan, uh, we have these sections called ROA linkages, uh, and this is just a way to highlight uh, the connections between these issues uh, and the, the management actions to address them. Uh, so we're pulling out uh, other parts of the ROA that relate closely to the page that you're on. Um, for example, with this uh, particular page, it's connected to it, migration quarters and these region-wide features, of course, are related to just about everything else in the ROA. But, um, some of them, are, it's very clear there are certain uh, sections that relate closely to it. So we've just highlighted those to, to so you steer quickly over to those other sections. Let's see, why don't we go to uh, the shifts in species distributions? Uh, this page, uh, it pulls together a lot of information from the Northeast Fishery Science Center and other sources on other ways that species distributions are changing. Um, already and have been changing for years in response to climate change. Um, and these little videos are, were produced originally by NOAA, um, and uh, we've just sort of reformatted and adapted them a little bit to, to work well in the ROA here. So, and again, there's, there's more of those that you can get to by, by using these links in the, in the website. Uh, let's do the overview of the ocean economy. Uh, this is another good example of uh, we really focused on distilling what are the, if you're somebody who's coming at this uh, essentially new, maybe you're involved in some other aspect of uh, ocean planning or the, maybe you're involved in a different, uh, in a particular industry uh, and you want to kind of get the bigger context for this ocean planning work um, and, and what's happening in the region. Um, this page is a pretty good introduction to uh, what the ocean economy is, is all about in this region uh, and gives you some context for uh, how important the different industries are and um, uh, this non-market value is actually I'll, I'll highlight too as a place to uh, 
one aspect that is so challenging about regional ocean planning is the fact that so many benefits that we get from the ocean are not actually measured in dollar to, dollars and cents typically. Uh, so there's a lot of work trying to essentially place dollars and cents values on those or consider those values um, in line with other things such as fishery landings or revenues that, that are in dollars and cents. So again, this gives you a, kind of a gateway into that information and that gives you a good sense. But the, the other pages on the status and trends and linkages under ocean uses, um, maybe click on the tribal uses as a good example. Um, they bring together some of the key information on um, the different industries or, or uses that people um, use the ocean for in this region um, and, and give you some good background um, on it, let you delve down further into the topic. And actually, the, uh, we have the, the subject of this video sitting in the room even. <laughs> Uh, but and that's we have integrated that that uh, video comes from the data portal, um, and so it, it kind of cross references and ties you into some of the refer references and uh, resources that are available on the data portal as well. So we tried to draw from uh, that source as well and increase the uh, the linkages. Let's see, yeah, let's look at fishing. Uh, of course, very important industry. And uh, we developed, uh, this is a good example of an infographic style uh, graphic that we developed for this to very simply, instead of giving you a big table, a big graph, uh, just very simply tell you here are the key species. Um, and this is the type of thing that the information is out there um, and it can be found, but a lot of times for people who are not necessarily in the, the weeds on these topics, um, it's hard to get the, um, the quick sound bite kind of message that that you need to start. So we, we focused on those um, and give you ways to delve further into it. Uh, there's information on the landings with little uh, kind of highlights of uh, interesting tidbits that for different parts of the region. Um, this uh, draws again from the, the data portal, uh, but it's been adapted a little bit for the, for the ROA. covers both commercial and recreational fishing, and then a little bit of uh, on the fishery management uh, system in the region. Oh, let's see. Uh, national security, let's take a quick look at that. Um, this is something that uh, I think a lot of people don't necessarily think about, but there's, there's a lot that happens in the ocean, uh, I suppose, in this region. You do think about it more, but uh, uh, this, uh, to have this information uh, in one place tied together with these other ocean uses I think is very helpful uh, for people who are not as really involved. It gives you a really quick glimpse of this is what's going on out there, uh, things to keep in mind uh, when you're trying to balance different uses of the ocean. I don't want to go through every single page, so why don't I, I stop there? Mm -hmm.